White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre cut off Fox News' Peter Ducey's quote, dramatics yesterday after he had questions for her about the United States border. Let's watch. You said yesterday that when it comes to illegal migration, you've seen it come down by more than 90 percent. Where did that number come from? It was, because I was CBP speaking. is telling us the number is. I hear you. I'm about to answer. I'm about, people more I'm about to this answer you. Year so if you, far. if you, if the dramatics could come down just a little bit. I, um, it, if the dramatics could come down a little what's bit. What's dramatic about asking a question about? Okay, I'm, go I'm going to answer. So I was speaking to the parolee program. As you know, the president put in place a parolee program to deal with, uh, to deal with certain countries uh, on, on ways that we can limit illegal migration. And we have seen, the data has shown us that it has gone down by more than 90%. That was what I was speaking and to. to no, I'm, really we're, we're going to go. We're going to move. Go ahead. Go ahead. This comes the same day that the Biden administration announced a plan to send 1,500 troops to the U.S. borders ahead of a, quote, expected surge in migrants and before Title 42 expires. Um, I, yeah, I, she has to get, there's a lot of people trying to ask questions, so it's not, it's not like censorship or something that she tried to move on. Um, he also, his question was perfectly fine, so I'm not sure why she was getting particularly snippy with him, but... I don't know, people live, maybe they live for that kind of drama. The underlying policy is the important thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be simple to say, I'm going to address what you just said, uh, because maybe the latter half of what Ducey was saying was not necessary. Is it dramatics? I think it did get dramatic after that point when mm -hmm. Ducey responded. Like, there was a substitute teacher, and he was acting up, and he was like, I'm not being dramatic. <laughs> it's like, okay, Peter Ducey, and the close-up shot. Yeah, I don't, know, well, I don't know what that was. Obviously, that wasn't the White House's fault. Uh, that was whoever's camera that was. Yeah. Um, sometimes that happens to us before before uh, the cameras are rolling, like when they have us in the boxes on the screen. And it always happens to me, my, they, people, people in the control room zoom in on my face, and it's pretty entertaining. Yeah, but. they like the close-ups of Robbie's face, and they also have a relationship with why. Robbie, like a, a substitute teacher and a misbehaving child yes, as I'm well. The it all fits. I'm the misbehaving child of the rising staff. Um, anyway, obviously the border issue is not a great one for the Biden administration. Obviously it's something Republicans really like to talk about. Because we have this, uh, you know, we're facing down in a few days the likelihood of a significant wave of people um, heading toward the border in unsafe conditions, in conditions that favor cartel human trafficking and, and child trafficking and, and all of that stuff that is very, it's very dangerous for the migrants, the way they choose to come here. So that's, you know, very concerning. And then the, the processing and the keeping people places and finding places for them, it's all a mess. I'm sure it's something the Biden administration is dreading. It's, it, there's every indication it's going to be just as bad as expected. Um, Biden hasn't really, the Biden team hasn't found, they put Kamala Harris in charge of fixing this, so that was the first sign maybe that things were amiss, but uh, what, do you, what do you think the Biden administration is doing wrong on immigration? I think what they're doing wrong in this particular instance is not communicating with the public effectively, which is something this administration has been criticized about a lot. I mean, Biden acknowledged it himself uh, in the correspondence dinner this weekend, where he said, you know, I just show up to press conferences, I take no questions, and then I leave. Uh, press secretaries have been criticized for not really being there to give good information to the public, giving very short answers to stories. And yeah, I think that's really at the heart of this. We have a, a bit of a drastic change in policy here that might result in an influx of immigrants over the southern border, which is on many people's minds as well because of what we just had happen with the shooting in Texas. And so I think this was a moment where they just should have communicated more that this was under control. Sometimes people just want reassurance from the administration. What Ducey was doing there was a bit of, I want to get my narrative out, so I'm going to read this information that I have at the press conference instead of, you know, asking questions and eliciting information. And so that goes both ways. Uh, but my piece of criticism would be there's not enough communication out of the White House on issues that the American people really care about. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that's true. And the American people do care about immigration. Um, I don't know that they're on board with some of the stunts Republicans have pulled, the kind of move the immigrants to Martha's Vineyard, that whole kind of thing that Republicans like to uh, like to engage in. But uh, pro I, I gather where Republican, where where the American people are at is that they, you know, they want, they don't stigmatize immigrants. They want, Im we're a country of immigrants. We, we want people to be able to come here. We want them to work. We want them to be able to contribute. It's good for the economy if that happens. We need 
more houses built. You know, all of this. It's, all, we have a labor shortage, and a, a lot of uh, a lot of our problems stem from that. So yes, let's have immigration, um, but we need we need to make it. We need to fix the process so that we know who's coming here. They can come through safely, legally, not in a way that empowers uh, gangs of criminals and leaves people to die stranded in the desert, but to come here legally and you know does not create this chaos on the actual border, and then coupled with border security, that sort of thing. Um, but unfortunately, there's so little appetite for compromise here. Uh, Republicans don't feel like they have to compromise because it's a good campaign issue. They kind of want the situation to be bad because then they'll run on the situation being bad. So it's some really pernicious incentives. I think that's very true because the Biden administration is not like, oh, let's change how we do immigration drastically. After, in 2020, Democrats made Trump's border policies the central point of why we need to get a Democrat in office. Kids in cages was such a, a, a point that was theatrically made time and again to the extent that at county fairs in Iowa ahead of the caucuses for the Democratic primary, we're putting like baby dolls in cages to mm. signify how cruel Trump's policies are. Biden gets in office and has deported more Haitian immigrants than any president in U.S. history. So it's it's a game, right? You're absolutely right. There were right tweaks, but they're... right, so much tremendous continu uh, continuation in policy. Yeah. Even the kids in cages, the con continuation from Obama to Trump to Biden. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely The media true. only cared yeah. about it when it was the Trump administration. And I, I also don't like the theatrics of, you know, we're going to bus and, and fly migrants to other places. Yeah. That's not addressing the problem either. Uh, you're someone with the power to write legislation to make policy. Uh, propose immigration policies that will address the issue at hand, not just be theatrical and say it's actually on them because you guys are the ones that want them here. That's not true. I always bring this up. I, I think uh, so. Obviously, Republican the Republican Party leadership has become more hostile to immigration, really both mm -hmm. forms of immigration over over time. Right? Bo George Bush in the aughts famously tried to actually do immigration reform. John McCain wanted to do immigration reform. Um, it turned out party leaders were out of step with conservative base, who is very much not all about immigration. Uh, I, I gather some of it is is a view, a view I think is not correct, that, well, if we just let everybody come here, there we were, we're creating an insurmountable problem for ourselves because these are Democratic voters, and we, if we, you know, we need to keep them out so that the Republican Party can continue to win elections. But it seems to me that a lot, especially a lot of Hispanic immigrants are not reliably Democratic. They are very gettable for Republicans. They tend to be much more religious. Um, Catholic, in fact, many of them. They, many of them are fleeing um, countries that they perceived to have been socialist dystopias. Um, they're, they're, they want to work and contribute to the economy. Um, so there are some misperceptions, I think, about immigrants that has really sabotaged the Republican Party. Yeah, I, that's very true. When I consider who is coming over the southern border, I can't disconnect that from the United States history of regime change in Central and South America and the role that we played in destabilizing so many countries, producing conditions that led them to become refugees and flee and come to the United States over the southern border. Many of them sympathetic to the American message, many of them you know, who claim to be victims of socialism. I would argue a lot of the folks that are in the United States uh, that came while those regime change, you know, many of them wars, sometimes it was coups. When those happened and there was, uh, you know, the government decided we need to take some of the land that's owned by these very wealthy private people that are colluding with American multinational corporations, we need better land redistribution. A lot of the families that held a lot of wealth and resources that were negatively affected by the policies that changed that came to the United States and are very sympathetic uh, to the Republican Party's message. What I think we have now along the lines of race rather than just who are these people voting for everybody who comes across the southern border as a Democrat, it's the composition of people's communities. People want to live in white communities that vote for Donald Trump and like the racist policies and rhetoric that he's pushed. That is something that's entirely different uh, from a lot of the traditional arguments we would hear about immigration, about the impact on our economy and, and migrants stealing our jobs. Those two things are, are very yeah. separate. I mean, the more affluent and white you are, the more likely you are to vote for Democrats, which is why the, the whole idea falls apart. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're right. Maybe some MAGA people have that idea 
idea, but the more elite, high, elite, highly educated correlates with affluence and whiteness in America, and those are that's a constituency that has become democratic. So I think Republicans should revisit some of those assumptions. I think that's just uh, the voting population in America as a whole can be described as that yeah. comparatively. More rising right after this.